so you you kind of became I don't want to say known known, but in the you know from the Chappelle show and then from some of your Comedy Central specials, but you know because I had hit I hit when I was like in my early twenties, and you've been doing stand up for twenty something years. Twenty eight. Yeah, so we've been in March. so we've been doing stand up around exactly the same amount of time, but you hit way later. Right. So were you happy about that? Because how hard was the? Because for me, I went straight from high school into you know some acting stuff, and then MTV, and then from MTV starring in movies. It was pretty yeah. early, so it happened within five years. For yeah. Me. So what happened to you is way more difficult than what happened to me because yeah. I had a nice slow mm. ascent. Uh, you know, 28 year overnight success kind of thing. Whereas other people that I see that like they just shoot up like that, it's really, um, it's it looks really difficult to sustain. It looks difficult to try to wrap your head around it. Where, um, you know, like, I just do shit and then I just forget about it. Like I don't like hang on to stuff. So, you know, as much as you were talking about that big gig I just had, once I did it, mm. it's like done. And I don't walk around thinking or feeling differently. I mean, I'm happy and I was elated. I felt a hundred feet tall that I did at the gig, that it went well. But I don't then walk around. I don't have that thing of like, oh, I need to wear my sunglasses right. and, and, and have a red bandana wrapped around <laughs> my neck. No, kidding. But, um, it took you, but it took you about 20 something years to, to become known around i no. uh it took me 2005 is when you started was when it started to happen for and me. how many and, years and, was and that after you started that was 13 so i so 13 I, years i did a half hour for hbo and that came out in november of of 2005 and in september uh jim norton was doing louis ck's show uh was it lucky Lu was it lucky louis the first one yeah i think so yeah lucky louis on yeah. hbo yeah so he was out in LA shooting and he needed somebody to sit in for him. So I got in on the amazing Opie and Anthony show mm -hmm. and then the HBO thing came out. And that's when people mm -hmm. were starting Sorry, to understand yeah, yeah. that it, it was because of the internet, it was becoming this thing where you, you, couldn't, you couldn't just do one thing anymore. You kind of had to have a couple of irons in the fire mm -hmm. to, to build this base. So mm -hmm. um, when that happened, then suddenly I could sell tickets in the east coast like from boston down to dc that's, that's when bill called dc yep Reich. yep and then i could i did well in cleveland in san francisco and i did okay in chicago so i got that mm. so it was a combination of um opie and anthony radio markets and sort of my stand-up style getting sort of like you know uh, the coastal northern cities and stuff the south was a wasteland for me as were a lot of the, yeah. uh, I guess, well, the so-called flyover states. Yeah, the, I don't the tertiary buy markets, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so then then I did an, then another special. I did a, I don't know, I did a special, uh, Why Do I Do This? That was initially on Comedy Central, and then it went on Netflix. And when it went on mm -hmm. Comedy Central, be like, eh, you know, a few people saw it, and it went away. Netflix, it was on there, people liked it, and then you could come back. And then I saw mm. this swell, and I also saw a little bit overseas. So I started going overseas and I would bring my DVD and I would just give it out for free over oh, there. Oh. Because I learned from playing drums, I was looking up, or guitar I was trying to play at that point. Mm -hmm. And I, I looked up for a cover of, of the rhythm section on Walk This Way, okay. how to play it. And the only guy who did it was a guy from France. So I clicked on his video and it was in French and then immediately all the YouTube videos were in French. I was like, I've never been to this part of YouTube. And then I clicked like, oh, fuck. There's all these different rooms here. So what I did was when I went and I went through like Scandinavia is I gave all of them. And I go, upload these to your YouTube channels. Wow. What year was this? 2008, 2009. Wow. 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 Yeah. So then I did like. So yeah. you're really grassroots. I am. So my you're own. like full on like sell this shit yeah. out of the back of the trunk. Exactly. Or give it out. I've always said this, 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 this right. business has never been looking for a balding redheaded male. They're not like this is what we're going to build the show around. So I knew mm. early on, not early on, maybe about 12, 13 years in, I knew early on that I wasn't what they were looking for and that I was going to have to do it this other way because there's two ways 
you can you can kind of do it. You can be the flavor of the month, what they're looking for. You can have a hook. You can have a catchphrase or whatever. There's that road. And then there's the other one where I'm just going to keep fucking Pounding, yeah. year after year, yeah. keep going to the Des Moines Funny Born or whatever, so, yeah. and just keep building it and building it and building it. So so speaking of flavor of the month and, and being up like that, so, I mean, for someone like me, right. you know what I mean, who'd done that other route, because right. I was acting and I was doing all this stuff, and I was on the road to, like, really acting. I was acting way before MTV, mm-hmm. before MTV, and then MTV called, and it just fucking took off, and it went into movies. So what, I mean... Did I fuck up? You know what I mean? For as far as my choices, because I, w- I got this opportunity, you know, because it's not the well, way that you went. You know what I w- I'm saying? I would say this. Yeah. I would say this business is a motherfucker, mm. and there's nobody who goes into this business does not take a beat down. And it just it happens. It's how you react to the beatdown. Mm. And I always say, no matter what they do, you can't let them like sort of like your pilot light. If you let them put that out, it's like because you know I had some friends of mine going, you know, this gig killed my career or this guy killed my career. And I was always like, if you let it, mm. if you if you, you you anything can kill your career if you give it that power. You you don't give it that power and. You got to get this mentality of like if they hit you down, if they knock you down, you get up and it's like I'm going even fucking harder. Right, right. And then also you have to have like no ego yeah. as far as like if you start getting into that fucking bullshit of looking at uh, the, the bullshit, you know, oh, I'm selling this amount of tickets. And this person's selling this amount of tickets, and they're driving yeah, a well, Bentley. They're driving a Bentley. People, I should yeah, be yeah. driving a Bentley, and I should have a fucking scarf on. And and uh, how come this person on the movie is being whisked to the set in this this kind of golf cart? Yeah. I need that kind of golf cart. Yeah. And you just start buying into all yeah. of this shit. Yeah. And it, that's not what got you there. What yeah. got you there was you did the job. So I am a, a, a you know I have this weird sort of white collar blue collar background well my parents are professionals but i grew up in a really blue collar town you know we had some financial problems at one point so i was living in a duplex i kind of got like the whole Mm. experience but my parents are two of the hardest working people i've ever met and i worked with my dad in his dental office for five years and this guy was just Mm. he would have a bony impacted wisdom tooth in the chair and side book a fucking root canal on the back too which is three canals he was just devil right moving back and forth yeah insane i i was constantly i ate lunch standing up wow it was unreal but he was you know but he, he was had, banging you know, it out he had a zillion kids yeah. so he just fucking when you say you have 17 brothers and you're kidding 17 really 17 they're all adopted yeah except me so they all resented me that's where i got my toughness wow. yeah that's fucking heavy and i used stuff. to scrub the floor with a toothbrush well, that's a whole other... I'm just fucking with you. I'm just saying all misinformation about that. Um, yeah. But the thing I got out of it was I, I kind of got that work ethic. And then what I got out of... Um, I, it's so weird. Watching athletes and musicians, I got my I'm not quitting thing. Like, um, I would say this, this, this Stevie Ray Vaughan and Double Trouble when they, they played uh, uh, the Montreux Jazz Festival. Mm-hmm. It was just a bad booking. Mm. Everybody was up there like, ding, 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 mm. ding, ding, you know playing like fucking jazz and shit mm. all hitting the light and then he came up there like Hendrix meets you know uh BB yeah. uh, King or whatever the hell he was doing Al- Albert King and uh he started playing and they started after two three songs they were booing because mm. it was so jarring and so different and you could see it in between songs physically affecting him mm. but when he went into a song he just he just ripped mm. and i remember hearing Chris Layton their drummer telling the story that afterwards when they walked off stage he was like man I didn't think we were that bad and they weren't they fucking killed but what I loved about it was watching that was he you know he just kept he just did what the he did what he did Mm. Mm -hmm. so I see that I I see like you know watching that Jordan doc Mm. you know where it's just like the Pistons just kept beating him and they were beating him up and all of that shit. What did he do? Did he become a free agent no. and then sign with the Pistons like no. all these kids do yeah, today? Which yeah. is just I don't even know I don't even know what these these championships are anymore. Mm. No, he lifted weights. He got tougher. 
He dug down deeper. He beat him, and then he got a thing. So I get a lot of that um, that mentality. Because I look at that going like, okay, what I do is so much easier than that. Mm. This guy's got to deal with, like, you know, Mahorn and Lambeer beating the shit out of him. All I got to deal with is just coming up with some more mm. silly jokes. Yeah. Like, my, this is way easier. So, um, So getting back to what you were saying is, like, people love you. Mm. And you have a fan base, and it's just like, so whatever you're doing, you just got to go as hard as you can, and you have to keep between here positive and not let, you know, because there's all these songs and shit about New York City, how tough New York is. It's fucking L.A. L.A. is brutal. Mm. It's fucking brutal. At least, the, I, I think it's just the lack of change of seasons. Mm. And just every day, it's just <laughs> yeah. like, fuck, yeah, this yeah, again. Yeah, it's the same this thing. Again, yeah. This again. This yeah. again. It's Groundhog.